Hi, everyone, and welcome. This is Seek Sustainable Japan. I have my Sato Island headband on. I am talking with Yui Kamiya. We are doing kind of a, a post Sato Earth celebration little conversation. Thanks so much for joining, Yui. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Now, unfortunately, we did not have a chance to meet during the Earth <laughs> celebration this year,、um, but we were just talking about how in the poster we're doing the picture together. So it's kind of like we had the feeling to, <laughs> to be together. But it's great that we can recap together because、um, you've got great photos, I've got some great photos.、Uh, your insights as an organizer, as well as、uh, as someone who was in the audience. Mm. And、uh, different perspectives, yeah. So, overall,、uh, from an organization perspective, how was it? Was it a success? I think,、uh, I think it was a success financially and just as an event as a whole. Like, we felt like it was pre COVID again. Like, you know, we had people from all over the world and we had people less. Masked up people, which I like because I like seeing everybody's faces.、Um, and, you know, just overall vibe, everybody was so energetic and really excited. I think the only downside was it was over the top hot, <laughs> which I think brought everybody to a high at certain points, which, you know, it, it, it was great. <laughs> it was、yeah. so clear and so beautiful.、Yes. But yeah, in the middle of the day, it was like 37 degrees. It was super hot. And you were saying how that's really unusual this time、yeah. of year. I mean, Sado Island is part of Niigata Prefecture, which is known for a lot of snow in the wintertime. It's in the northern part of the country. So, obviously, we would expect it to be usually fairly cooler than Tokyo and other places of Japan. And so, it's kind of an oasis for people to come to East,、uh, Earth Celebration every year. So, it caught us by our surprise, too, that it got really sunny. <laughs> yeah, it was so hot. But, it, but, you know, the pictures look great, it was really beautiful. Uh, so, it was the first time that I've been to the event. It was August、uh, 18, 19, 20, basically. I went on the 17th, I left on the 21st.、Mm -hmm. So, I was really there、uh, for the whole time. And it was really a wonderful event from a, a spectator perspective.、Um, I enjoyed talking to so many people,、uh, running stalls,、uh, so many other people who were at the event, not only from Japan, too. Like, there were some international people.、Mm -hmm. I had a chance to talk to. I remember at one of the concerts, I was talking to an Italian mother and、mm -hmm. her two daughters, and she had seen the Kodo group in Europe years ago,、oh. and she'd been a fan ever since. So, this was her dream、oh. once the borders opened to come to Japan and see Earth Celebration. So, that was so wonderful.、Mm -hmm. What a great story. Those stories are my favorite. And, you know, like, It really truly is a pleasure to have people travel all the way out to Sado because you know, but it's not easy. Like, logistically, travel and everything, like, it's not like taking a train out to Kyoto or Osaka or taking a flight out to Hokkaido. But I mean, it's a lot of logistics involved to try to get out to Sado. So, like, we're more than just happy to welcome not just、uh, Japanese people, but travelers、uh, coming out all the way to Sado. Yeah, wonderful. I did the big trek. I, I did a long, slow drive in my electric car, a thousand kilometers every way. And I, each way, and I was like, yay, I did it. You know, awesome. It was a great adventure. And then I was like, maybe I've come the farthest in Japan. I don't know. And then I met one of the taiko groups from Fukuoka who drove. I was like, man, lost. <laughs> there, what a commitment. I know. And they performed for us too. Like, they were so great. Otogatari san. Amazing. Yeah, they were one of my favorite、uh, there at the fringe. Uh, the husband wife team that, that are heads of the group and their expressions, and they were just so fun and energetic and、mm -hmm. real crowd pleaser. It was awesome. They were one of my favorites, too. Yeah. Well, let's, let's go through kind of day by day.、Uh, before that,、uh, can you let us know how many people came to the event this year?、Mm -hmm. 
So it's hard to count, but we do have like a counter that goes in and out uh, for that main gate. And we estimated that there were around 23,000 people attending throughout the entire weekend. Wow. And, yeah. And this includes not just guests that are uh, coming into Sado, but we're really lucky to have a lot of um, contributors and supporters on the island uh, that they look forward to attending. So it's in and out of the island. Uh, people come to this event. So we're really happy that the numbers are looking close to pre-COVID. Mm. That's awesome. Because it was the first time in four years, really, that you feel like it's back, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> the borders are open and we have an international guest. Like it's all the feelings, right? Mm. Yeah. And the, the last night uh, you had the voices of South Africa. And uh, in the beginning of the concert, you were talking about in the introduction, it really took four years to get them there. Uh, that it's been four years in the making. Kind yeah. of, you guys had a collaboration in Europe. So you knew that it was going to be great, right? Yes, and it was really honored, uh, honoring the the leaders that really took us over here. Like every year when we invite guests over to perform with us for our celebration, we have like a special story about how we met and blah, blah, blah. Uh, for this year, the two key people that uh, brought us together, the, brought the two artist groups together, um, one of them are, is really sick and the other one, uh, he... he passed away during COVID. And so it was like a beautiful tribute um, for the two artists to come together. Mm. Yeah, that was amazing. So yeah. touching. And I don't know if you saw, but there was a shooting star during that performance. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I missed that. Yeah, like, I feel like I'm not over exaggerating, but I feel like Sado Island itself adds on to the art history of the performance and the festival. Like, I, I don't know, like, this is me, like, talking um, and being too excited, but Sado Island, like, gives, you know, you're showing this picture, too, but it gives color to the festival, like, that you can never uh, get anywhere else. Um, I think it's very alive. <laughs> For sure. Mm. And anyone who goes to the festival, you'll probably be driving around because it's quite a big island. Mm. Um, so I just showed the picture of the beautiful sunset as we're waiting for the evening concerts to start. Uh, so at the end of every day, every day of the festival, there's lots of free activities and different performances on the fringe stages going on. And then every evening, there's this big concert. And every evening, there was this beautiful mm. sunset. <laughs> and then as the night goes on, you can start seeing stars as well because you're on an island without too much city light interference. So that was amazing. Mm, absolutely. And you were camping out there. So you might have seen, but once you're done with the concert and you go back to wherever you're staying and you look up and it's even brighter, like the stars are even brighter because like you said, there's not much street lights on the island. So I've never seen anything like it. So it's a really beautiful experience. It is really special. Mm -hmm. And you, you were mentioning about uh, really can't be done with without the help of the local people. Mm. All, the, all the local people I met were just lovely and they were so appreciative for everybody coming and supporting the event, which is really important for their community staying alive as well, to have not only visitors, but it brings in new residents as well, right? Those kind of Absolutely. events. And like, to come to think about it, this, is, this was our 35th year holding our celebration, which means it's their it's the Ogi community's 35th year hosting it in their town. Um, and throughout these 35 years, they've been welcoming guests from all over the world, which is incredible for a small island, a small town inside an island, remote island, right? Like, um, and we do a lot of our, um, I guess, performance, not just performances, but events parading through their town, like we would not be able to do it without the help and understanding of the local community. Yeah, awesome. Uh, and just driving, just to give a little bit more color, we're talking about color, mm -hmm. um, because it's summer, and driving around the island and seeing all the lush green rice paddies everywhere. And then the mountains, there's so many beautiful mountains. You've also got 
uh, beautiful race terraces along the coast. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the most famous one, but I, I saw a bunch of interesting also rock formations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm. And some of them look like famous politicians, for example. <laughs> <laughs> and power spots mm -hmm. and uh, 20 million year old rock formations. And, and so, you know, stopping along the way as you're driving around, there's a lot of interesting views. That was fun. Yeah, it, like having a car is personally my favorite thing to do on Sado Island, just driving and stopping and admire the scenery. And, you know, the picture that you just showed, it's my favorite kind of green. <laughs> Isn't it great? Right before harvest. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just from my Instagram page, uh, just a few of the, the things I was sharing on my Instagram. So on the top right, I didn't have my bottle to hold for this this live right now because my daughter loves that uh, reusable water bottle so much. And it was a really nice design. You had a great designer this year. Uh, is this a different designer that you use every year for the theme? Uh, her name is Atsuko, Atsuko Ogawa, and she has been our designer since last year, I believe. And so um, we call it an eye turn, which is kind of weird because there's no turn in eye, but that's when um, people from outside of Sado move into Sado Island. And we have quite a lot of them because, uh, you know, Sado is great, it's beautiful, and we have a lot of younger generations uh, who are planning to, uh, who are coming in to move into the island. Atsuko is one of them. So she's not a Sado native, but she lives on the island now. Um, and she's a wonderful um, designer and an illustrator. And I think her ways of expressing things really uh, comes, uh, it's very, similar or it comes together with the ideas of Earth Celebration and what we're trying to be. Yeah, awesome. And you had a collaboration between the designer and uh, the water bottles that we just saw for the, the, the goods, the, the merch, um, but also a collaboration with a local craft brewery, Toki Brewery, right? Hi, hi, hi. That was the first time too. Like I said, there's so many great merchants that are starting business on Sado Island right now, um, including Toki Brewery. Um, and we also have, I think, a chocolate maker, Kakao Kurabusang, uh, and all of these different newer businesses that are starting. And we are loving the collaborations that are happening. Yeah, that's so good. And that beer was so delicious as well, which was Yay. always nice for a festival when you've got great beer, great craft beer, but also great coffee. Now, at the Yellow Fringe stage, there was a, a previous Kodo member who now has a very high quality roaster, <laughs> coffee roaster, right? Uh -huh. And so it was nice to see him and, and that connection to Kodo as well. Kengo, Kengo, Kengo is his name. And now uh, he used to be a performer for Kodo. And now he uh, runs a coffee business and we love him and our fans love him. And it just makes sense that he's there all the time. Mm. It was it was delicious <laughs> coffee, and I got some to go, so I'm still enjoying it. Nice. <laughs> nice. And uh, right next to the Harbor Market area, so that you have the concert venue, the Harbor Market, and then you have these classic traditional tub boats, wooden tub boats, and that's a real popular sightseeing place. So you had a lot of uh, sightseers just for that, but they were also able to go and enjoy the harbor market and maybe see some of the performances as well. So it was really nice location in that way, like tying up with other attractions, right? Mm -hmm. Mm, not only do we want to, of course, you know, I'm part of Kodo too, um, as a staff, and not only do we want to have fun with our performances, we also want to feature Sado Island and the history and the arts and cultures that this island has to offer. And so it's a it's a fun goodie bag of everything that Sado has to offer. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, it's great. And uh, getting a lot of, uh, most of the vendors that I, I talked with uh, were coming either from Niigata, mm. 
Otto as well. Uh, this, these two, the six Subi is their Instagram Musubi, and uh, they had great rice balls and uh, really gourmet uh, mm. sh shaved ice, which I enjoyed, and just super nice. And then uh, Mirai. Mm. And her beautiful designs, uh, this is headband from her. Uh, her designs were so popular. I saw everybody wearing it around the, <laughs> the festival. And she had these great big bamboo hats, really colorful right. and yeah. uh, postcards and everything. So it was nice. Um, and her designs are very, it, it's, it's colorful and it shows a lot of what Sato has to offer too. I love her designs too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk about the Ogi Parade, Tom Parade soon, but uh, that's how I was introduced to uh, this woman. And she uh, runs a, a vegan cafe in, called Mountain Grocery in Niigata. Mm. And so it was a great place for me to get some great vegan food, but also it's so nice uh, during the Koto Parade through the town. Uh, they said, it's her birthday, and we all sang happy birthday to her. And I just thought, that was so lovely. I love that. <laughs> I didn't know that. That was That is absolutely cute. <laughs> So we mentioned the, the roaming through Ogi Parade a couple of times. Now, that was one of my favorite little streets mm. to walk through. And I talked to one of the local ladies and she was saying her father is a fisherman. A lot of fishermen um, are living on that street. So these colorful flags are from their fishing boats. Mm. And so it was a beautiful way to decorate the street with all these great flags along mm -hmm. the way. And uh, of course the earth celebration banners and and designs as well. Um, but that's where they did that really fun uh, parade on the first day. First well, I think, day. Yeah, it was the first day. It was a parade to the main shrine, Kisaki Shrine, so we can pray for good luck uh, and, you know, happiness for this entire weekend. One thing I do want to add about the, the fisherman uh, flag, they're called Taiyobata. So it's a flag to wave around when they have a big catch, right? Um, one thing I love about Sado, uh, where I'm pretty sure this happens in other places in Japan, but um, to talk about sustainability uh, for taiyobata, when they're unused or they are renewed, they take that flag and they tear it apart and then they put it into a, uh, I don't know what it's called, eto, orimono, eto, <laughs> eto, sewing, not sewing, weaving. And they call, they make uh, purses and pouches and little, I wish I had mine. I have like several, but they call, they're they called sakiori. And so saiteru, which is taking apart and orikomu, weaving. So uh, they reuse these fisherman flags and making it into other goods. And it's really, really beautiful too. Fantastic. Hmm. And I think uh, people often say upcycling for oh, that. Oh. So you're you're taking something and then you're making a new product out of the discarded material, um, but cutting, breaking it down and then weaving it into mm. something new. That's really exciting. Mm. It's one see. of my favorite uh, or fascinating um, things that I found when I first moved out to Sato. <laughs> That's so nice. And I just I love the the decoration on the street. And then I heard in the north of Japan. Uh, they love rugby, and they're also famous for their fishing flags, too. Mm, mm. And at the rugby games, they wave the fishing flags at the sidelines as they cheer. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, wow, so much culture connected to these flags, right? Yeah, and then it, they're so colorful and festive. Like, I, I agree with you. That street is one of my favorite scenes to see because not only is it colorful and really photogenic, but it also shows how supportive the community is for this festival. And you do see along the way, there's some houses that maybe they're shuttered, maybe nobody's living there, but most of them seem occupied and there's businesses and people living. And for this event, uh, a lot of them were opened up and people were inviting people in to eat some food or to buy something. And you had some workshops along there, right? 
Yes. And so, like you said, uh, a lot of the, the residents are not there right now or unused. And what we did with some of them, just a handful, because, you know, it takes a lot of it, it takes a village to do these kind of things. But we we had the pleasure of using some of these unused houses and put it put different markets in there or like workshops. And we had um, a photo gallery in one of them. Um, so it's really great that we have that special connection with the community that allows us to do that. Yeah. Absolutely. That's such a good way uh, to show the houses, to make use of the houses, mm -hmm. even if it's just for the festival to, mm -hmm. to open it up and use the space. I've heard that in other rural areas of Japan, it's a really great idea. And mm -hmm. it, it's interesting for the visitor too, because we want to see inside these houses, right? I, I totally <laughs> feel you too. I'm that way too. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. And um, yeah, I saw this as well along that same street. They have these beautiful uh, decorations like uh, lamps with uh, designs uh, which are kind of connected to the culture of the area, maybe. Mm. And then off to the side, there's uh, some Japanese writing on it, on these lamps. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, the Japanese that are written on these lamps come from lyrics of the local um, song, eh, Ogi Okesa. So, local folk song. Mm. Wow, how fun. <laughs> I didn't pick up on that. Yeah, there's a, a lot that I couldn't read. <laughs> Maybe it's the local the local <laughs> song. I was like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's like an if you know, you know sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, so we've been talking about the fringe. So there were two fringe stages, one mm -hmm. the yellow triangle fringe stage, and then one up at the campsite, uh, the green fringe green stage area. above the shrine. Mm -hmm. And then the main concert venue was the blue mm -hmm. area, right? Which also had the harbor market, right? Yes. Hi. So how many um, performers? all together i know it's a big difficult Pardon question me, um because i think we had all of our i think yeah I, all of our koto performers uh not just performing for the the big harbor concerts but uh they also appeared in some of the performances happening in the yellow area fringe and also the green area fringe so it's hard to count, but there were many. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing. Like all, all the, the French performances where they, they do tie-ups with Kodo, like uh, Naoism 2 here, the beautiful, modern, expressive dance troupe, and they're uh, working with Kodo on a collaboration. So that beautiful music and really uh, interesting. I was telling you before we went live, I've never seen anything like it in Japan. It was so amazing. And I think everybody watching, as well as maybe the performance themselves, looked like they were just really into it mm. and really getting a lot out of it. For Noizumu, I think uh, it, this collaboration was one of the most popular fan favorites from last year. And I personally think that this collaboration is a match made in heaven because uh, we both share a commonality of Noizumu is located or they're based in Niigata and they're a dance company that's uh, tied to the Niigata theater. And so Kodo is technically part of Niigata, even though we're off to an island, we're part of the Niigata prefecture. So we're both uh, companies, performing arts companies that are based off of Niigata prefecture. And so we finally were able to collaborate and we love performing with them and I think the the crowd loves us too so <laughs> absolutely it was so amazing and the the taiko drums the the koto performers everything they did is so infectious I think that's that's the word right like as we we're walking down uh for the parade uh you just look around at the crowd as we're going down and you see everybody so into it and like, yeah. yay, you know, like what a great start to the festival. That was I so know. wonderful. It was really emotional for us running the event too, because that really like 
snapped us into like the right place, I think, for the weekend. <laughs> awesome. Uh, we have Natasha on YouTube. Thanks for joining. She says, wow, so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Sado is such a beautiful island. And so many of the performances were also just stunning. Uh, beautiful. I didn't expect so much like performance, not just, it's not just about the music. It's not just about Taiko even. Uh, the real diversity of performances, the the breadth mm. of, of collaboration. Um, for example, I, well, let's talk about the evening concert. So the, the Kyo Sui, the first night, mm -hmm. uh, was a real kind of tribute to the four original founding members of the Kodo group. Mm. And it's more of a classic Kodo performance. Is that right? Yeah, you, you nailed it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we celebrated our 40th anniversary in 2021. So this is our 42nd year as Kodo. Uh, but the four performing uh, distinguished members are uh, have been with us throughout the entire time. And unfortunately, we don't get that many chances to tour with them nowadays uh, for many reasons. But our celebration is one of the few times that we get to you know, cherish that moment being with them and standing on stage and uh, putting on a performance uh, for our fans. Yeah, that was great. So it's showing the screen from the Earth Celebration uh, website here. So the first performance was called Kyo Sui. Mm. Uh, what does Kyo Sui actually mean? It's a made up word of two kanjis. Uh, kyo is uh, like a reverberation and then Sui is drunk or, you know, just kind of, uh, in the moment sort of thing. So, you know, just in the moment, feeling that with the, the whole t drum reverberations is what you want to feel or what we wanted everybody to feel. Yeah, that was so interesting and, and such a great introduction, I think, to the, the whole festival, the three days. Mm. Uh, and of course, I, I was just blown away by one of the founding members, the amazingly expressive and creative performer who joined so many other groups to dance in front of as she was performing, right? Mm -hmm. It was just amazing to watch uh -huh. her, not only on stage the first night, is that Chieko Kojima? Yeah. yeah. Is, we're talking about Chieko Kojima. She's one of our, um, well, one of our founding members. And I feel like she's one of our well-traveled performers because she's really, really popular and um, well-liked from everybody around the world. So basically, throughout the entire weekend, she had so many things to attend to because um, everybody loves her. <laughs> she has so many friends from all over the world, right? <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. And did she say that she's in her 70s? Really, age is just a number. She has <laughs> boundless energy. Amazing. <laughs> and then the second night uh, was really oh, interesting. interesting concert mm -hmm. called Harmonia was the, mm -hmm. the theme of that night. And there were two very creative, uh, modern musicians mm. and it's very like almost experimental mm, mm. in in the style of performance is that right yeah you uh, you basically use the word that i wanted to use experimental is definitely what we like to do and we continue to do as a performing arts company because kodo uh we don't call ourselves a taiko drumming group uh we're a taiko performing arts ensemble for a reason because taiko is one of our main uh, drum uh, instruments that we use and we continue to learn and evolve and so not just world music but we like to learn from digital music and new music and experimental music just so that we our musicality kind of um, it spreads to a vast um, interest, I guess. And so uh, these two artists, uh, Kakudo Manami-san and uh, Hasunuma Shuta-san, two of them are very popular artists in Japanese festivals, outdoor festivals. And so I would say they are one of the, the highlights for the younger generation music right now in Japan. So um, being experimental on stage, and a lot of them were 
not rehearsed <laughs> and it just happened so on spot on the spot and i was looking for, at it from the back but i heard that they had quote unquote instruments that are just seashells that were picked out of the ogi um ocean you know like a lot of different things that they used on stage came from ogi or sado and they put them into a musical form and so <laughs> it's a lot of playing around and it being experimental and being artistic with the the music um and we wanted to have like a different feature for each each night so um i guess the second night was basically just playing around with music yeah it was it was really i would say magical mm -hmm. like the the performance itself being outside as you're watching on the big stage uh we were talking about before all all photography was basically off limits for most people um but that really frees you up to just watch and take in the performance as well uh, you don't have loads of screens in front of you. Uh, you're not worried about the shot that you want to take either. <laughs> you're just taking in the moment and taking in the music. And it was it was lovely. And I I didn't know these artists uh, before I saw them perform. Uh, the the way that the Kodo Taiko, it's not just a Taiko group. Kodo, you guys are so creative and so versatile in how you perform that it just shows like the depth of, of your musical understanding in ways of working with experimental musicians like this. And it, it was, you know, like, it was taking a trip, like an <laughs> audio, you know, musical trip. And it was wonderful. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times when we talk about drumming and um, just percussion in general, like people don't really talk about the mixture of it with digital music. And it is, difficult like sound wise technicality and everything and we try to create that fine line in between and we also try to um we we collaborated with the artists for some of our most iconic pieces one of them was monochrome which was you know um the drum the drummers sitting and playing on a high-pitched drum and it was collaborated with a lot of digital music we also had a piece that was um that we call old Eichel, which is just one drum, one man sort of thing. And that was collaborated too. And it was insane for us to see that happen too. It's everything was new, like, and we like to do new things and I guess challenge ourselves. And that helps us open up to new ideas and creating like creating new ideas too. Mm. How, I, I mean, it's it's experimental, it's it's creative, but it must be really hard to also plan or practice, right? Mm -hmm. But you've been practicing for months before the event, right? Not exactly. <laughs> Our performers were on tour until July, um, and then they come back. And I think for each of the production, we only had maybe three nights to come together and practice <laughs> and so um i think that's why koto performers are able to pull it off because they're they're they, they're trained they're well trained and so um and then we also have different things always going on but we are able to pull this off as a company because we're always together and we're synced to one another in creating music wow just impressive. And then uh, both the second and the third night, you had the Odaiko, the mm. big drum performance. Uh, on the second night, it was in collaboration with uh, Shuta mm. Hasunuma. Right. And on the third night, it was in collaboration with Voices of South Africa, right? right. So just amazing. And what a feat of physicality like <laughs> amazing i but think this picture shows it all right <laughs> you can see every muscle straining like this is a serious workout mm. uh, did you have different performers on each night during the odaiko this year, yes um and for previous years for odaiko we usually have a different odaiko soloist every night but we have some overlap in the cast but this year i think we had a different group of cast members for each night it is physically challenging that's why <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Just amazing. And then, of course, it's not just the evening performance. Uh, I saw some of the same performers uh, collaborating during the day mm -hmm. in different events or different uh, fringe concerts. Just amazing. You guys were so busy. You must have been <laughs> sleeping for a week after it was done. I mean, it like having this all happen in front of our eyes with audience and friends and family and supporters around us, I think that just trumps everything that, you know, we, we would be feeling in terms of tiredness. Like, it, we're just happy that it all happened. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, and then the third night of Voices of South Africa. So this is a group from Johannesburg. Yes. And uh, you, Kodo Group has performed with them before in Europe, right? Mm -hmm. But this was the first time it actually happened uh, on Sado. Tell us a little bit about them. Mm. Uh, well, Eto, the last time we performed with them was right before the pandemic. And so that was really, it, it, it kind of created a core memory for us in a lot of different ways. Um, and then during the pandemic, we had a digital earth celebration and they sent us a really heartwarming, beautiful video message too. And it just made us want to see them again more. <laughs> and it just really happened magically. They were here. They actually came in right before that weekend. I think they came in on a Wednesday or Thursday. And so we literally had two days uh, to practice and put something together with them. But I think, Joy, you witnessed it, but it was absolutely beautiful and magical. <laughs> and like you said, there was a shooting star. Mm, yeah. Oh, did I not talk about this on the live stream? Was it just the two of us? Talking? No, no, I think you did. You mentioned okay. yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, it's it, it all happens by fate. Um, and it's not just this year, but I'm sure it happens every year and in the future too. And that's why I, I want people to keep coming back because Sado Island has this magical moment here and there all over <laughs> and you get to feel that in person like not just through pictures it's really important to see it and feel it live and it, it's life-changing yeah i think it's it's something i'll uh, be talking about for a long time and i got the impression a lot of people felt like that as well that i wasn't the only one and uh people as i was saying on social media that i was going to the event a lot of people said oh i went years ago i really I remember fondly or I had great memories or like everybody it's yeah life changing I think that's a good way to describe it yeah it's core memories made life changing and even though I'm there every year like every year has a different story and a different event and experience and so I'm never getting tired of it and that's why I keep coming back too <laughs> That's awesome. And then uh, we've we've talked about the concerts, uh, but I think a lot of in, on the fringe stages, uh, we talked about collaboration. There were also uh, big groups that came uh, mm. to perform with Kodo from other parts of the world, right? Yes. So you're looking at a group picture from the Big Little Taiko Festival. This was the first time holding this festival um, as our fringe event. And we had, oof, I think four or five, like my brain is dead right now. But we did have groups coming in from all over Japan and one group that flew in from the U.S. and San Diego. Um, there, they happen so to be one of my good friends. <laughs> and so it was a pleasure for us to host them and seeing them on Sado Island after so many years of talking about and trying to convince them to come out. So it's been really wonderful to not just have uh, a group, I mean, groups from Japan, but even from outside of Japan too. And this concert, or sorry, this festival, Big Little Taiko Festival, the, the, the program is something that we really want to continue doing too. Mm. Yeah, I think I caught the end of it. They were trying to continue for a hundred minutes or ah, that one was a different one. That oh, one was a different one. minutes with Hachijo. Hachijo is a style of taiko playing from Hachijo Island in Tokyo. Hmm. 
So and we there was going on, yeah. Yeah, and there were a lot of workshops, but also <laughs> even on the fringe stages, there were a lot of chances for families to get involved. You see a little kid here uh, mm -hmm. enjoying trying out some taiko. So it's like the future of Kodo, <laughs> the future of taiko. I, I talked to so many younger people from the island and who were visiting and coming to the festival who were just so excited about what they were seeing mm. and you can imagine that that would connect them in the future to coming and being a part of what you're doing right mm -hmm. exactly like i think for festivals um you sometimes you have an idea that it's for younger generations and it's like all standing and it's a lot of like strenuous energy and work but we, um i mean Festivals, music festivals in general, I think, are not always like that because I know that Fuji Rock Festival is very family friendly, friendly too. And for Earth Celebration as well, we try to, or because we're family members too of our families, right? Like we understand that we want to take our kids somewhere and, you know, there needs to be a, a diaper changing room and like stuff like that. And it's not perfect, to be honest, but we do like to um, see improvement in welcoming in different people from all over the world, old or young or whatever country or culture, and that that can be welcomed in our space. Yeah, I think you've you've done it well. I mean, you were saying uh, before we went on that, of course, there's always problems or things that you can improve. Have you already started planning for next year? Yeah, I mean, um, it was unbelievably hot this year. I think that was one of the things that like was engraved in everybody's minds, including us. And so, you know, and we understand that it, this isn't a one-time instant instance. Um, and hopefully, or we are already talking about having more shades, more cooling off rooms, like like just you know places that people can just sit down and relax. Um, just different ideas that are being discussed at the moment to make our lives and your lives better while you're enjoying our content on the island. Yeah, no, I was really impressed with what you already organized. So when I was watching on the Fringe uh, stage, there was a lot of shaded areas for people watching. Uh, I, I was telling you before we started, I couldn't believe the performers performing in that heat and you know, amazing. Um, but yeah, something something you guys are already planning for, I'm sure um, now that you know how hot it can be, mm -hmm. uh, maybe easier to prepare in future. Uh, walking around, I was really happy to find loads of water fountains everywhere, which is quite difficult in Japan usually, but every small park had somewhere I could fill mm -hmm. up with water. Um, there were a lot of trees around, so it wasn't it wasn't too bad, even though it was really hot. Yeah, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> lots lots of room for improvement. Always improving. <laughs> Definitely. Well, like like any event, you uh, know, so much goes into it. Um, yeah, uh, Natasha says uh, accessibility is a beautiful thing. Uh, what a gorgeous cultural exchange! Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, so on the second night, we were talking about the concert earlier, but I love this part of the <laughs> second night. Uh, before the concert started, uh, you had the Kodo group came walking through the venue and really got everybody excited about uh, the concert ahead. I love this idea. Mm. And you can see it in their faces that they're really happy that you're here. <laughs> the audience is here and, you know, we're all in the same space together. Like it's not just stage and the audience, but we like to create like a togetherness vibe. And so I love this beginning too. Mm. Yeah, that's lovely. And uh, you had some photos as well at the end. Uh, this is one of the fringe stages as well. You're amazing. Uh, one of the founding members of Kodo. She not only performs and entertains everyone with her beautiful costumes and amazing dances, but she rallied the audience into dancing with her, <laughs> which was so lovely to see. You can tell that she has friends everywhere. <laughs> She's one of the best human beings ever. 
Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, you had a big performance at the ferry when people were heading off, right? Mm -hmm. So that one was really special too because uh, this is called Okuri Daiko, so farewell taiko, I guess, in English. Um, and we like to do this almost every year when it was physically able to do so. Um, and I think in recent years, it was a different ferry where people couldn't come out to the deck <laughs> or it was a jet foil where it went really quick, right? And so this was the first time, I think in seven years is what I heard, to properly send off everybody with our performance, like with everybody seeing what's happening outside. People are like watching, if they're not on the ferry, they're watching from the outside and Koda performers, you know, making, you know, that last stretch in performing for everybody <laughs> out in the heat. But it was just, it's our way of saying thank you for coming out all the way to Sado Island and wanting them to come back. <laughs> and so at the end of this Okuri Daiko, uh, we all say, Mata koiyo, so come back again. <laughs> yeah, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, Natasha says, look at the joy on their faces. Oh, my heart. The send off, my heart is so moved. That's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. But that's, I, I think that's like a, a wonderful part of Japanese hospitality as well is that you often see, you know, if you stay at a, a Japanese inn, for example, uh, when you're leaving, the staff will come out and wave you off and wave off your bus or taxi as you're leaving. I, you I think that's a beautiful thing. Sorry? <laughs> Until you can't see them anymore. <laughs> but I've never seen that done with Taiko. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's just our way or our way of expressing our gratitude. Yeah. And uh, one thing that I'd never seen done with Taiko either uh, was in the mornings. never seen Radio Taiso as it's called in Japan or radio morning exercises um, but I'd never seen it done with live music which I absolutely love and of course the Kodo flutes playing as everyone does their morning stretches that's a lovely idea do you do that every year uh, that was one of our fan favorites from last year actually it was be because everybody loved it we're like should we do it again that was so fun <laughs> Absolutely. That was really fun. And a nice way to start the day before you go around for the festival. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, we talked about the concerts. We talked about the Fringe. Um, a little bit about your organization has already started for next year. Do you already know who you want to collaborate with next year? Is that kind of top secret? It, there has been different conversations already um, and just look forward to our announcement. I'm already excited about it. So hopefully we can, you know, pull through and have them come over to Sato Island. So yeah, it's definitely going to be a treat. I, I'm really excited. Yes. <laughs> and you, you showed me that there is already some videos and things that people can watch. Uh, if you missed some of the event or some of the fringe performances, it is possible to catch up on the YouTube channel. Is that right? Yes. Um, so we had a live stream uh, event, quote unquote, happening all three days. And those live stream events are basically, uh, they, they ran from the morning to uh, up until the Harbor Night concert. Unfortunately, the Harbor concert is not part of the live stream, but you're able to catch some of the footage, the digital footage that we were able to create during the pandemic, along with live stream footage from the actual event that happened this year. Um, the archive will be gone next Monday in Japan. And so you do still have a chance to watch it right now if you want to, you know, take a peek inside of our Celebration YouTube channel and you'll get a little feel feeler for what our Celebration has to offer. I'll just add, add the sound just for a minute here. 
all these traditional instruments mm. and uh, some are recorded and then some are from live during the reception, right? Mm -hmm. And just kind of a collaborative kind of video, a compilation of of taped performances, but also live uh, footage from the festival this year, right? Yes, exactly. So forever for whoever that could have been. Yeah, wonderful. So there's there's a lot that you can watch, and you said it's it's going to be taken off the channel in about a week, less than a week. Yes. <laughs> So watch it while you can, folks, yeah. Um, but also on the Instagram page, there's um, some updates and pictures from the event. Is there anywhere else you've been sharing information? Uh, from this year, this past year, um, I think our social media would be the best place to watch out for our newest uh, um, announcements. We are still sorting out the vast amount of photos that were taken by our photographers. And so hopefully we can start releasing some um, digital footage in October, I'm hoping. <laughs> the, the best place for people to see what information is coming out uh, is maybe the website and then they can link from there. Yeah, absolutely. As you can see on the website, we've already announced our, um, our celebration dates for next year, which is um, 20, in 2024. It would be August 16th through the 18th. Um, it would be the weekend after Obon holidays in Japan. And hopefully uh, you'll get to see more footage of what happened this year. So it helps you kind of imagine what you will be expecting for next year. And furthermore, information for next year would be uh, probably available next spring is what I'm guessing. Um, any advice for people who are thinking of, of going next year? Like maybe they should book accommodation if they're Absolutely. serious about it? Mm, accommodations are always honestly really challenging sometimes because as you can, as you saw, Sado Island is not overly populated <laughs> and so uh, we don't have that many locals that would run businesses and so accommodations are always challenging and I do honestly recommend people booking in advance and as at the same time uh, because this event is held between Kodo and the Sado City um, that's one of our things to improve to improve the audience experience and you know, try to find lodging or camping sites that are more fitting for people of all ages and you know, stuff like that. I, I, we are still working on it, but lodging is definitely a challenge that I would work on early on if you are able to. Yeah, and uh, get involved, the get involved section, if someone wanted to run a stall in the market, for example, uh, any advice, uh, the kind of stalls that you're looking for or any insights there? Uh, for stalls, it depends on every, every year on what we want to focus. But generally, we do like to focus on local uh, merchants and local businesses um, and also vegetarian, vegan choices. And just I think it says on the website, too. But um, yeah, I think. If you are interested in holding a stall, um, everything is on the website. Uh, and I think we start applications in the springtime as well. And then if people wanted to perform on the fringe, is that going to be something they could sign up for for next year as well? Absolutely. Um, and fringe stage dif uh, is different every year. And so we're still working on how to present uh, timelines or time shifting um, the entire events, I think. So we're still trying to figure out some small details. And once those are confirmed, we're able to um, put out applications for whoever that wants to perform at the Fringe. And we do have a lot of requests coming in from overseas which I'm really, really happy and excited about. So if you are interested, um, just, I guess, shoot us an email. Um, there's like, a, I think, an email form on our website and so that you wouldn't be more in the know of what's happening for next year. Yeah, awesome. And uh, 
save the date. I say pencil pencil in those dates on your calendar for next year. Uh, if you can make it to Japan, if you can make it to Niigata and make it over to Sato Island, I think it really will be a wonderful experience. It's, it's a very, it's a much deeper, uh, much more meaningful, much more fun, connected way to travel, isn't it? I, I really think so. Like, I mean, it's it might not be easy compared to other places to travel in Japan, but at the same time, the amount of time spent that you're like focused on for this Sado Island trip will be worth your time for sure. Yeah, so lovely. I, I would say there was so much uh, great connections with local people, so mm -hmm. many wonderful uh, people working there, running stalls, uh, the Kodo members, you guys are amazing. All the performers I talked to, everybody was was really excited mm -hmm. about being there, about performing, about being a part of the event. Um, there's so few events in Japan or anywhere that are like that. Uh, so I would highly recommend it for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Any, any final words, Yui? Thank you so much for joining. Yeah. I mean, like I said, Earth Celebration tells a different story every single year. Like I have a different experience, wonderful experience every year too. So not only is it an event that you should come like once in your lifetime, but it is an event to come back every so often because it gives you different beauty of what you need in your life um, every time you come. Yeah, and it's it's not just like we said before, it's not just being at the festival, it's being on this beautiful island that you can explore Absolutely. and all the nature as well. Yes. All right, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, beautiful words from Natasha and Cheryl, thanks for joining uh, YouTube at the end. Thrilled to be able to stay up till 2 a.m. Thanks for joining us at 2 a.m. <laughs> Natasha, you're amazing. Yay for vegan vegetarian options. Yeah, it was awesome to find that at the festival. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. As uh, Cheryl said, also agree about meaningful and beautiful uh, connection with performances. Thanks, you guys. Mm -hmm. Wonderful to have you here. And thank you so much, Yui. And really, otsukare sama deshita to all of you and the amazing organizers of this event. You did a great job. And I'm sure it's going to be great again next year. Thank you, Joy. We'll see you next year, too. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Thanks, Yui. Thank you. See you next time. Choose.